So I would like to start with acknowledging the traditional owners on the land in which we're meeting today and paying my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I think it's a pretty apt thing to do on a day that we are talking about storytelling. We're talking about learning from each other and being inspired and having hope. And I think we can all acknowledge that our traditional owners were really the masters of storytelling. Unfortunately, our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community members are also overrepresented when we talk about aspects of vulnerability in this community. We also know, and we've heard today, that one in five women experience family violence. Family violence is in fact the lead cause of homelessness for women and children in this country. We know that people that have disabilities and health issues are again overrepresented in having issues in accessing what they need to access. People who come from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. Stages of life. When you have a child, all of a sudden, you have potentially one less income and things change and you have absolutely no sleep for anyone who's done that before. There are many, many aspects of our society that are helping, uh, unfortunately, to make people more vulnerable. I myself, you may have noticed, have a trusty and very on-trend walking stick. I carry my new friend because about 15 years ago, I went to Byron Bay because who doesn't want to go to Byron Bay? And my sister convinced me to go for a trek. And at that point, I got bitten by a mosquito. So, at that point, my life changed pretty dramatically. I developed a disease called Ross River Fever, and that then turned into an autoimmune disease. For those of you who have been to an airport with me, no, it is not contagious, and no, if a mosquito bites me and then bites you, you cannot catch it. These are the questions that you get. Now, what happened for me was that I did become more vulnerable as a result of this walking stick. The, uh, the Ross River virus lives in your body forever, and there is no cure but it does go dormant and then come back. A year ago, a year ago for me, uh, it, it popped back in. And I believe, it's to, I believe these things happen to us to remind us why we do what we do, um, to give us the lessons that we need. I do tend to say, um, look, I've got the lesson now. If you want to pop back and go dormant again, I'll be OK with that too. So, in 2016, we held a Vulnerability Roundtable and we brought together 130 people from across the country to talk about some of these issues that I mentioned. And we asked people beforehand, you know, what are you seeing? What do you think these issues are? And all of these things came up. But then when we asked them what they were doing about it, funnily enough, not so much with the synergy. So, people who are experiencing the different types of vulnerability have no consistency in how organisations across this country are working around that. Someone has to tell their story 150 times, and sometimes that's just within the one organisation. When we're going through a difficult time, our bandwidth is about this, and yet we want people to understand and absorb and to follow so many different practices, it's like being in a maze, and we expect people to be able to go through that maze multiple times. So, we came together as a collective and we said, what can we do about this? And we co-designed a vision for a different future. And that future was a place where everybody in Australia had the access to the essential services they need to thrive, in a country where you should have access to those services. One of those, uh, on that day, we had many different things that we wanted to do, and what part of that was about understanding what's our opportunity to learn from each other. So at Thriving Communities, we have a share, borrow, steal model. Anyone who is doing something good has to share it back to others to, for others to learn from. In our partnership, we have about uh, two, almost 200 organisations participating, and behind you, you'll see the, the partners that we have involved. Now, these are not necessarily, some of them, the organisations that first jump to mind when you think about driving social change and doing good in the world. We are a cross-sector collaboration, and inside every organisation are amazing humans that want to do good. And through thriving communities, that's what we are enabling. We talked about some of the statistics a moment ago. Now, almost 50% of our community is currently vulnerable. And as I mentioned, it can happen any time. 13% are in severe 
or high financial crisis. There are over two million people in this country right now who are not being able to afford to pay for food and general necessities on a daily basis. There are over two million people in this country right now who, who regularly cannot afford to pay their bills. The stress and the pressure that that puts on people. And unfortunately, we have quite a siloed approach. When you think about the opportunities to make a difference, there are lots of amazing things happening in those individual silos. But does that actually help the human? We talk a lot about human-centred design in the world these days, but sometimes I think we actually forget there is a human at the centre of human-centred design. Sometimes I think we are creating for people, but we're, we're actually not bringing that person into the room. In everything that we do at Thriving Communities, we use lived experience. Because it is about the stories. It's about connecting the hearts and minds of every person to understand the difference we all have to make and the change we can make. And excitedly, I'm here to tell you that that change is happening. Across all of the organisations that we work in, we are creating positive change. We are having organisations implement family violence policies, vulnerability and hardship policies, accessibility policies, and not just separate little ticker box pieces of the pie, but really entrenched change. And what we're hoping with that change is that it is consistent. I think all of us know somebody that's had something happen to them. And at the time, we all want to rally. Tim Costello, who some of you might know, is the chief advocate for our organisation. And he talks about the fact that we're not a village anymore. You know the old saying, it takes a village? We've stopped being a village. And now is the time where being a village is so critical. Because we actually have a responsibility to stand for each other. Organisations and corporate organisations talk a lot now about their, their social responsibility. But I actually think we need to move into what, what is actually our duty of care. Our duty of care to our community. A duty of care to each other. Because the reality is, individuals alone can have an impact. But when you add all of those individuals together, the impact is absolutely huge. The possibilities are huge. One of the key things that we talked about back in 2016 was having one space for people to tell their story. It was a wraparound, wraparound support service where the human stood in the centre and all of the things that they need were brought to them. Whether it be access to support programs within your bank or energy company or utility, whether it be access to a food bank, whether it be access to a financial counsellor or a family violence worker, one space. So instead of the person running around trying to get access to all of these pieces of the puzzle, the system came to them. I think historically we talk a lot about the, the person, the problem, the issue, as the barrier. They are not the barrier. The ecosystem is the barrier. And what we need to do is change that system. If I am in a building and there is no lift and I can't get upstairs, is that on me or is that about the building not enabling me to? If someone is experiencing a, a acquired brain injury and, and an IVR phone system at a corporate organisation can't understand them and they can't get that help, that's not about the person. That's the system stopping them from getting the help that they deserve to have. So we have to shift our thinking. Yes, in this world, we want to, we want to build capability and capacity. But let me tell you, people who are experiencing really high financial stress are actually very good at budgeting. The thing is, they just don't have enough money. So imagine a world where we all wrapped around that human and everybody put in a piece of that pie to that human to help support them. Imagine that possibility for that human and the future that they could have. And that's what we do at Thriving. Our big project, the system, this one-stop, one-story system, is actually now coming to be a reality. Uh, when we first thought it up, we thought it was a much longer term plan. How are we going to get all of these organisations across the country to come together? How are we going to get this alignment? How are we going to get everyone to accept that this is something that needs to happen? But the reality is, when you connect the hearts and minds of the human to any person or organisation, amazing change can occur. Today we've heard so many amazing inspirational stories from so many amazing inspirational people. 
but every single person in this audience is amazing and inspirational. Imagine the change we can all make together if we leave competition at the door, if we leave ego at the door, if we leave our biases at the door, and regardless of which industry or what, what company you come from or what your background is, if we just look at the person through that one lens about how we can be a part of supporting that human to be able to thrive. I'm going to play a video now, which is our, um, our one-stop, one-story vision. But I'd like to finish by saying, I believe that if we have hope and passion and vision, we can actually make a change in the world. I believe that we can have a society where everybody has access to all of the services and support they need. And I believe that we can have a country where people are enabled to thrive. And I, I believe that we can only do it if we do it together. Thank you.